lung cancer. Actually, a boring called the hack on the liver. Injury, frack. Comes so a frack. Like and on this first of February 2000. What does it really take to get a pharmaceutical approved? Well, in this case, expedited. Now, often, for example, a lot of us don't even know how many years it's they tested, how many people are tested, or what even goes on. Well, this is, we'll just give you a quick breakdown. Now, this goes to, we're not talking off-label use or anything along those lines. We're talking just drugs which are rushed to market. And this is what we have. An article that was published in the Journal of American Medical Association's Network, October 2013. The title of the article was called, Study Examines Expedited FDA Drug Approval Safety Questions Remain. This goes into the drug expedite process. What they did is looked at 2008. The FDA approved 20 drugs. 12 went through the standard process. Eight got rushed. This is what they discovered. Of the 20 drugs, as I just stated, 12 standard, eight rushed. The years in development each drug was required or went through, seven and a half years for standard, and 5.1 years for rushed. Now here's the catch. Now we're not going into uh, pharmaceuticals having a hard time finding participants for rare or unusual disorders. We're just talking basically just participants to detect drug safety and so on and so forth. A standard drug for approval has 580 people before it actually studies for efficacy prior to being released to the market. The rushed ones, and it has become worse, or I should say the number has become less since 2013, only requires 104 study participants before it's approved. Now we're talking about 104 people over five years. I'm not counting animal studies or in vitro and things along those lines. And this is where it gets really bad. Because you would think these studies would be bigger or more broad, especially when it comes to safety. Five years after development, we're talking the rush. We're going to leave the standard ones out because they tend to follow the rules and they had good studies ahead of time. The ones that were expedited to rush. And the FDA said, all right, I'll trust you and I'll approve your medication, provided you do some post-marketing follow-up in regards to its safety and efficacy and everything else along those lines. Now remember, the FDA rarely ever pulls a drug, but this is what happened. Of the eight rushed, 31% did paperwork on the post-marketing evidence in regards to the drug. Only 9% after five years bothered to submit any of its paperwork for review. We're talking Five years. Even if your group is small and it's a rare disorder, five years and less than one out of ten is actually submitting uh, safety trials or efficacy trials for medications which are approved after they already make billions of dollars. Then you may go, well, it's a drug. Who cares as long as it's helping people? Well, let me give you an idea. And I wrote this down from the paragraph here so I didn't have to write on the board. Of the 20 drugs that are approved in 2008, Five, sorry, six were animal carcinogens. Five were in vitro mut mutagens. Fourteen were animal tetrogens. Five, after it got approved, got boxed warnings. Eight drugs required risk management plans. Of, of the 85, and this is being a little bit repetitive here, of the 85 post-marketing requirements for these drugs in 2008, I should say, only 9% finished their post-marketing studies. So when you look at the how drugs are studied, we're not talking ghost authorship or anything like that or any further corruption. We're just talking FDA enforcement. You really got to look at it and take knowledge into your own hands. If the drug is not showing to work in the clinicals and the research, don't trust it all because it's approved. Trust it because of the data it presents. And trust right now is that of an overwhelming 9%. Thank you.